Greetings everyone, and Great here from another H Bars 4 replay. Spawn on the bottom left side as the red English, we have the Mista. Spawn on the top right side as the blue Roos, we have Louie MT. And since we do have a Roos player on the field, let's go ahead and switch on out. Suck the Roos player so we can take a look at the trade bounties. Look at this. Deer, deer, and deer. And blue finds the first set of deer. The fact that there's three groups of deer nearby could be very good for the Roos player. Or very bad. One of the two. Pumbas down here, as well another Pumbas up here. That's going to fast forward for the time frame. And he is taking the bad path. So, he will not find another deer deposit. Red will likely find this one. No, he will not. There's some Zodok Doggos here. Some Sheeple as well. There's the deposit has not been found. Just a bunch of forest puppers and a fluffy pupper. And blue will find them all. Looks like there's eight deer deposit in this deposit. Blue will find this other deer deposits. So he has claimed three. So soon he will be at 210. He needs uh, to get to tier two, 250. In which there's probably still some wolves on the field to obtain. We do have the Kremlin on the field, a good defensive landmark, and get a free wooden fortress for that wood benefit. The Kremlin's one's definitely, in, I would say, one of the best uh, landmarks in the entire game. Almost on par with the Aachen Chapel. In my opinion, the Aachen Chapel is still, at least the Holy Roman Empire variant, is still part of the best landmark in the game. Also, the Roost player is a pop cap. He has fixed it. He does find a good number of wolves. Actually, you will find another one up here. And this is something very important to note. Look how much trade bounty he has. 350 means if he kills off both four, he have tier 3 trade bounty without the need of the uh, trade house. At this point in time, maybe a good idea to rush out a early night or two and hunt down the boar. Still, either oh, Abbey of Kings. We now have the king deployed on the field. The king is a heavy cap with less armor, more health. Does cost 100, 100, so same cost as a Ke well, similar cost to a Keshek, if some food and gold, of course. The king does have a health regen aura. So he's like a heavy cat that can raid around. He's good. If you like to play on only a single row knight, the king is a good alternative if you want to play the English. Scout here does spot this. He does get enough stone there for a second town center who's playing it right next to this gold deposit. He's not eyeing to put it next to a deer deposit like most times you put your second town center. He wants to make sure that he has a safe gold deposit. In fact, he doesn't actually have a mining camp at the moment. He does also have a lumber camp here, collecting up additional lumber. In actuality, if you look at it, he has very little villagers on both, both players. Looks like I'm age or I guess like a town center. Blue Scout is trying to hunt for wolves. He's going to hunt himself some human. A most dangerous game. King does take some fire there. The villagers may have took a lance attack as well. 24 damage. Yep. King taking some damage there. Doing some economic damage as well. Keeping his opponent not collecting up resources.
scout here next to the deer deposit, seeing the English player not collecting it up. And now there's a uh, mill and farms going down right there. In the middle, just a few towns that are just a safe location for farms. Always more safe. The king is just harassing there. Here's player is now going. Oh, oh, kind of someone that showed like a knight symbol around the early night. I'm just going crazy. He's not playing early night. Scout trying to shank that villager and try to stop the villager from building out some walls. Early night. Probably could just pursue down the king. The king has 16 damage and two attack speed. Oh, the king hits really slow, doesn't he? I did not realize how slow the king actually attacks. While the regular early knight does attack at 1.5, the king attacks at point at 2.38. Now there's some militia push blood on the field, just trying to stab these villagers. Does torch down that gate. These militia have now died from dysentery and now got the high trade house being plugged field. I didn't hear him claim any four, so this will get him up to tier three eventually. The two scouts can of course shank the other scout no problem. The knight should be able to deal with the king no problem. The high trade house is being employed out. Right there. Yeah. Not a great spot, honestly. Though it's not really. It has to be way down here. Or if you have a good spot. Another pair of militia not being employed on out. English player almost has enough food to age up as well. Berry bushes on the way, so that may need to be collected to get rid of them. Knight and King does find each other. The high trade house will probably provide around maybe 150 gold per minute. At tier 3, maybe close to 200, but that's probably about it. Thirty-nine trees. I don't really know the exact number of uh, gold to tree ratio it does give resources. I'm doing now the White Tower, which I'm sort of surprised. Not the King's Palace. The White Tower is a defensive placement. It's a free keep, which you can use that immediately to pull out some horsemen. But she doesn't have a barracks, archer range, nor stable. That would be a good alternative. The primary town center. And for 15 people, they have got a sheep here. And now with the White Tower to pull in field, the White Tower does actual reasonable damage with its arrows, so it should be able to keep these units at bay for the time frame. And now Blue's going to claim for Pumba does go down there, and that probably put him to tier 3. Pretty close to it, needs 3 more deer kills. And the king gets it. Be thrown. Knight is engaging the knights. Bruce Knight does fall back there. And now we have Boyar's Ford to be researched, which will allow hit Bruce Knight to be superior quality to the English Knights. And additionally, in the next age, the Bruce Knights can also get plus four damage as well. Of course, there's always enough for citadels help out the knight for defensive reasons, but they're simply just outnumbered at the moment. Well, 
Ладницы, на коней садитесь. Исполнено будет огня. Red Knight does eat that charge there. Or Roost, nice to be playing field. We also got a good number of warrior monks out on the field. Paul trying to claim some relics. So far, he's picked up one and claimed one. Red's monk does go down there, down here. We got a handful of knights here. Does got one villager. Red does not have textiles at the moment. Blue Scout will go down, which actually is important. It provides some much needed vision for these knights. In fact, all these knights are severely wounded. Maybe falling back to a warrior monk wouldn't be half bad. The king's now here. The heat king can provide heal benefits to his men, so he doesn't have to worry about falling back to a monk. Relic 3 now claimed by blue. Relic number 4 is picked up. Relic number 5 is over here next to these wounded royal knights. Or not royal knights. Knights. Just knights. Blue has got an increased range armor. Red does not have increased range armor damage or any upgrades. Push your way forward. If the one of the warrior monks get a hit, they will provide the Saint's Blessing kick, uh, benefit, increase the nearby damage armor of these nearby units, plus two damage, plus one armor. And it's not exactly an aura effect to be constantly rejected by, by the monk, it's a simple timed AoE effect where. Once they hit, the warrior monk can die. It's not consistently projected out by the warrior monk. These knights are falling back, severely wounded. The not king may get a kill. The king's tax speed does not increase for age. Down here, we do have the boar being disturbed the boar carcass but do have a good number of royal knights and monks here not royal knights just knights i'm so used to saying the word royal knight knights now engaging does get charge attack there on the king okay do you have another monster to put this fourth relic away some of these villages are going down you could try a wool and relic is put into there so the villagers are standing and fighting. Warrior Monk does give these villagers plus uh, extra damage and armor. More of these uh, villagers are going down while this knight is being pursued. High Trade House is providing 180 gold. I'm pretty sure he's at tier 3 as well. Yep, yeah, he's at tier 3, so it's not a great a High Trade House. A good one I would say is when it has tier 3, at least 2... 130 gold. Fortified policy walls going on up. Got some exposed villagers here. One does get impaled. They do have textiles. These knights don't have any ranged armor, so those arrows will do two damage each. They're not great, but decent. Both sides could stand against some armor and melee attack. Both sides just mass producing knights, so the English trying to transition to some spearmen. After all, a bunch of angry men, angry men with pointy sticks is very dangerous to horses. Nice charge on the way forward. We'll find some spearmen. It's not a good engagement angle for blue. Going to be through a choke point and through some spearmen. Yeah. 
has some spring golds and military academies now bring research by the roost player and now bring in some militia only eight militia he does have three more charges and he's going for the spring gold placement there on the kremlin Warrior Monk does go down. Spearman now engaging. Knights push away forward. You got Saints Blessing now mixed on in. In Grey Mount damage increase and armor. More of Red Spearman push forward. He does have another Saints Blessing there. The King has been regicide. So messy engagement. The number of Roost Knights are actually still alive, but severely wounded. He does have two warrior monks to heal them up, so maybe a bit of downtime's in order, because look how wounded this force is. Maybe downtime on top of Sacred Sight to capture it up. Wrote these knights up way four. There's some palisade walls up here, however. There we go, getting some much needed heal health regen. And now the Berkshire Castle being blown field. And this is going to be a relatively good spot. The Berkshire Castle will help cover the choke point and help uh, claim some of the golden stone in the center of the map. Down south, got some warrior monks on top of this sacred site. Strikes over there. Spearman trying to push the forward here. Fortified policy walls have plenty of health as well as their gates. Got some of these villages now getting hit there. I just wanted to saw a cannon and fire shot there. All the knights have gone down. Berkshire Castle now firing away. Berkshire Castle's range is through there, so it can actually hit beyond the gate. And this would prevent any sort of sacred site victory possibility for the roofs. Honestly, you can throw a warrior monk inside of a battery ram and it can still capture. Probably not though. So, and couple your heroes, if you throw units into a back of a half track, it, can, it will have the capture capability. So, we actually may be able to. High armory now being the on field, which will allow them to pull out cheaper siege weapons around it, as well as some unique research. Now playing out trebuchet. That one does go down here. The fortified palisade gates taking some fire. Warrior monk still taking time to heal up the spores. Trebuchet firing away. No castle watch here. Blue's not going for Tithe Farm. He does have four relics that will be very useful. forward and spring all does fall back the berkshire castle gains some decent damage onto it 15 damage spring golds have looks like i've already went down let's break off that 20 uh pierce armor it has and it would take extra damage a uh, good number of roost archers here interesting which will be useful for us against these english spearmen and currently right now, they are a fully elite. Got some Shrouds now being put on the field as well. More Roost Archers. Wouldn't be half bad at this moment. 
increase spring guard range now bring research as well both sides have similar village accounts oh, and blue has a far superior quality army 10,000 versus 5,000. Right, does have a good number of Hank in years. So he's going to try to start forcing down the fortified palisade wall. Trebuchet engaging, getting some damage to the wooden fortress. He could try to, for the shrapnel shot for the trebuchets and crap put them on the high ground so they're just barrage away. Though that upgrade's still not really that useful, honestly. It provides some support, but not really a great amount. And now we do have the increased attack speed uh, for Maganos. So it looks like Blue's going to eye for mass Maganos. Maganos are, of course, do bonus damage versus ranged. And Spearman will take a reasonable amount of damage versus them. we got armor clad and mana arms. Mana arms are pretty. I guess Spring Golds only have 10 range armor, so the Berkshire Castle is able to get a lot of extra damage onto it. Archer's backing on off. And that outpost will burn down quite a bit of outposts instead of map for the English in order to get the network of citadels or castles. Let's see what's that moment. It is citadels. Got a handful of hand cannons up here, and the Roost Archers push them forward. Zeus archers will be able to gauge a bit more cost effectively, but they will get annihilated. And these villagers looks like will go down. Shack Castle pulling out more hand cannoneers. Trebuchet is firing away. They are affected by Neverbrook Castles. Huh. They get affected by Network Castles, but not by Network of Citadels. I thought it was a uh, uniform, but I guess not. A couple frosts and tees right there to stop the stone walls from going on up. Blue's horse is pushing me forward. Let's get out a couple more villagers. Blue's so far killed 32. One to kill off 12. Bouncer there in the white tower providing some good damage. Protect his villagers. With number three forward, a massive number of knights. Iron crept this wall. Looks like a set of delays. It's the wall, it's the corner segment there I'm having trouble clicking on. Maybe force find the ground there. I'm not sure. Looks like it's the uh, corner piece of set of blaze. But let's see he has trouble repairing it. Because I can't, oh, there we go. I can slightly click on it occasionally. It's about to go down. And there we go. It actually burnt down. <laughs> and now there's a big breach in this wall there. And it quickly gets rebuilt. Cross three four, gain some more kills on Red's villagers. Very nice. Since now that's now through Red's walls, he's forcing to stream on and he gets good damage there. All 51 villagers. Red's are now engaging with horsemen. Red still has a sizable army here. Red's and Blue's quality army are very similar. Blue still has an advantage and does pick off some of those siege weapons. So it does get picked off by the Berkshire Castle in return. Now, 
Townsider, additional Townsider to pull out on field. We'll allow the English player to pull out more villagers. It's a little bit easier. We're going to short some of these Palisade walls. Hand Candy is not good for that. And got a couple orcs here to deny this gold deposit. Red does have enclosures researched. Horseman does go down there. Red sign for a counterattack with some spearmen to this region, but there's of course a wooden fortress here as well as a keep. Apparently there is an opening there for the archers to skim on by. Some of these villagers are trying to get hit. Warrior Monk trying to keep this point uh, captured. Archer getting stamped. The archer should be able to pick off the spearmen. Some of these villagers actually got hit. They will escape from the keep in time. Warmuck does stab there. Try to capture the sacred site. And that is a Schultzy there taking out those spearmen. It says he has a melee attack, but I never really know if it actually does hit. It looks like it does. Keep now being pulled out here. Up here, we have Spearman go on down. Trying to decapture, Red's trying to decapture the sacred site, but it's no longer decapturing the sacred site. Both sides just massing out army. The Reese players have max pop, so is the English player. So the Reese players stock on good on resources, more so than the English at the moment. Getting down some of those units. More stone walls going on up. Missing tingling up walls looks like. English player is now going for elite army tactics, which will greatly help him out. His opponent has biology and Boris fortitude. I don't know if he has the elite army tactics himself. Well, maybe not, because I don't see anything that will classify this. I don't even know if he has a barracks on the field. Outposting some fire there. Berkshire Castle firing away. Got a handful of spring bolts here for defense. Red does have a decent force here. He needs to make sure he's in the choke point. Some spearmen were covering this flank, and now his horsemen are streaming on forward, turning over on the spring bolts. Horsemen are pushing way forward. Those horsemen charging way forward. Got a good number of shells and archers in the back line. Red does have a good number of hand cannoneers for defense. All the spring have gone down, trying to push, of course, push away forward. Of course, there's the White Tower of Berkshire as well as the for the defense against them. Batteries making their way forward, hitting down the Blacksmith, which is doing research. Large number of Magnals there. Finds dead Spearman. Or made them dead, one or two. Blue, I think he may have killed off a bunch of his villagers because right now it's at 80. Wasn't really paying, paying attention to that number, so that explains why Blue has such a massive arm on the field. Good hits there on these hand cannoneers. Both players have less than a hundred population. The first player is spending all of his food reserve. And the English player does back the game now. It's Andy Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.